Hey, Crimson Tide fans. Welcome into our second edition here of the Alabama Adapted Athletics Coaches Show on BamaAdapted.com. I'm your host, Alex Booth, and today I'm joined by our Director of Sports Performance, Anthony Wood. Thank you for joining me today, Coach Wood. I uh, hope you've been able to enjoy your summer so far as we start to ramp back up the school year. Oh, no, it's been good. It's been real good. Thank you for having me. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, since we're still in the summer, I kind of want to ask you about what your off-season and summer schedule is like um, compared to what your schedule is like during the year. Yeah, so summer is really super important for us because obviously when we get back, we don't have that much time to prepare before we start playing games. So summer, we try to increase the volume a lot, um, try to get a lot of reps in, all that good stuff. And then as the summer progresses, we get closer to August, so to speak, intensity goes up. So volume may go down a little bit, but it's also a a time where we try to create our culture, you know, um, just who we are going to be because like the beautiful thing about collegiate athletics, each year is a new team. Like we have new problems to solve, new things to figure out, um, and then really try to try to prepare these men to lead them, and you know ultimately find a leader for the team. But it's really cool. Like we go four days a week. We'll condition two of those days, and like I said, just really have a good time and and get after it. And you work with both our men's and women's uh, teams. Uh, you have familiar familiarity with both of them. What are some of the dif- differences you notice? Um, with both teams and in the way you train them? I mean, really, it's about the same. You know, sometimes you use your coach's eye as we get later into the season, just see, like, maybe one team is doing this a little bit better, the other team's kind of struggling in this area, so that way I can kind of make adjustments on the fly. But, like, it is the same sport, and our program is our program. Um, and I think it worked really well last season, if I do say so myself. So really treating them the same, but also, like I said, paying attention to, you know, maybe our girls need a little bit more, you know, power development, or our guys maybe need to build a little bit more strength during some points, and um, kind of making those adjustments on the fly. But like I said, they're both amazing teams. They both work super hard, and I'm um, super excited to see see what this season has in store too. Yeah. And obviously every athlete is different and has different physical capabilities. Uh, how are some of the ways that you work around some of those specific uh, physical capabilities for each athlete? I mean, really when I look at our athletes, I don't even look at their disability. Honestly, I look at more of their function because two people can have the same disability but totally different function levels. So it's a lot of trial and error. Um, so like this first year, um, or this is past year, was my first year. So building that rapport with them was super important. So that way they trust me. Um, but we kind of, I write the program and that's what we do and then, the way it gets done may look totally different between our like four fives and our one o's. Um, so we'll start out if they can't do it, you know, we'll make it a little adjustment, make it a little bit easier, so that way maybe they can do it. Then and we'll kind of find that starting point to where we can start building um, those muscle groups and things like that. But like I said, just focusing on what each athlete needs and they whatever function they have, that's what I try to train. Yeah. And I, I have to imagine it helps having the uh, type of resources and equipment uh, that we're equipped with. What is it like having just uh, something like that gym that we have down there? It looks great. No, it's beautiful. Like I said, we have three racks, and everything is specifically made for our population. Like, we are benching a little bit wider, so that way if our athletes, you know, are paralyzed from the sternum down or don't have use of their lower limbs, they can use um, their shoulders to stu- like get that stability they may need for bench press. And then we work a lot with our engineering department to come up with different modifications for some equipment and things like that. And then one of the biggest things that we have in our weight room is called Elite Form, but it's just a form of um, technology that tracks bar speed. And when we get later into the season – um, you know, not necessarily working off percentage-based numbers, but more so on how far, how fast the bar moves just allows us to avoid overtraining because it just allows the body to do what the body's capable of that day, whether it be a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever that athlete has to offer that day, that we can get that out of them. So I think that's been a huge part, but like I said, this facility is beautiful and um, it definitely gives us an advantage. And not only weightlifting, but how important is it uh, to have a good nutrition plan for these athletes in place in order for them to continually improve on their physical capability? No, nutrition is super important. Like I tell our athletes all the time, it doesn't matter if I come up with the best strength and conditioning plan, our coaches have the best, you know, on the court plans. If they're not fueling themselves outside of this, um, outside of the time they spend with us, then it's kind of going to a waste. So trying to educate themselves to make better decisions as far as nutrition. So, like, we've partnered with our nutrition department here. Um, we get them to come in and do different talks throughout the seasons. Like, hydration is really big, especially because we're on the road a lot and we have long travel. So make sure 
our athletes aren't dehydrating themselves um, in order just not to go to the restroom mm-hmm. on the bus and things like that. So just equipping them with more knowledge and trying to, you know, do surveys at the end of the year, see what they would like to hear about and things like that. And then, you know, after all of our lifts, we provide our athletes with shakes if they like them and smoothies and things like that. And then we constantly keep fresh fruit out and um, protein bars of different sorts. Just so that way, like I said, we make sure they can fuel. Um, and not only providing them with that, but also providing them with the knowledge because we do want to set them up for, you know, long-term um, just making those decisions long term. So once they leave here, they still know how to, to eat healthy and things like that. And you're always looking for ways to uh, continuously improve. How are ways that you're able to adapt and change things and improve off last season? I mean, really, we just have to keep building on what we, we left off, like brick by brick. So, like, knowing I spent a whole year with our athletes and I know where they are, I don't necessarily have to start at the same point I had to start with last time, which also, you know, just continue education for myself, trying to stay up on the latest trends and things like that and, and reaching out to some people that I've worked with in the past and just see what they're doing. And, um, like, I have one coach, you know, Re- Coach Real Wright, he's working with football and volleyball now, so just seeing what they're doing over there and try to, you know, pick some things that may help us and I feel like will put us – you know, in a better position going forward. Um, but, like I said, also just creating that mindset and the mentality. I think that's a big part as well, just getting them to believe in themselves. It's huge. So putting them in sp- spots in the weight room where it is super hard, but then they can overcome it. And, you know, they can – they figure out they have a gear that they never really felt before. I think it's super important mm-hmm. as well. So just creating that mentality that they, they are some, some monsters. And final question here, kind of looking ahead um, into a season – what does a, like a tournament week's training schedule look like for an athlete? And what are the type of things you, are you doing earlier in that week versus like on, on a game day or, or the day after a game day? Yeah, so normally if we're going into a, a game week, I try to to keep our heavier lifts on weeks we might have open, so to speak. So maybe like we don't do a true bench press that day. Um, maybe we do more like dumbbell bench press and things like that, just single arm unilateral movements. Um, but the volume starts pretty high at the beginning of the week, and then as we get closer to game day, that volume goes down. And um, maybe we do more speed work because, you know, typically the athlete who can get to point a, to from point A to B fastest wins. Um, so trying to make sure we stay twitchy, so to speak, and throw in some more of that work. And then on game day, a lot of times our athletes will come in, um, especially if we play later in the evening, they'll come in and do like a little game day lift. Whether And it just looks like some mobility, some band work, um, just stretching, just getting them out of bed. Because if you don't, they'll sleep all day, and we don't want that. Yeah. So just getting them moving and things like that. And then trying to adjust to the, the whatever coaches have scheduled as well as far as practice, just making sure that what I'm doing in the weight room, what they're doing on the court of line. Um, but like I said, it's just all about making them feel good. And like even on those Friday lifts, I'll have kind of a plan written out. But if there's something that athletes want to do that makes them feel better, then I'm all for it. Yeah. Well, once again, Coach Wood, thank you for joining us on the uh, Adapted Athletics Coaches Show here today. Um, and thank you, Crimson Tide fans, for tuning in wherever you may be watching. Be sure to follow us at Bama Adapted on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and where, where you're watching on YouTube currently. We'd also like to take this time to thank our sponsors, Honey Stinger, Hollister, Jalapenos, and many others all give us a chance to do what we love here at Alabama Adapted Athletics. Be sure to be on the lookout for another Coach Adapted Athletics Coaches show coming in the next few weeks. Thank you for tuning in, and roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs>